Hey everyone, hope you're doing well today. In this video, we are covering Home Premium and just how well it really works. Before we get started though, I would really appreciate if you left a like on the video since these videos do take a long time to make. Now onto the video. Hone GG, or commonly known as Hone Optimizer, is both a free and paid tweaking utility aimed at helping your computer's performance. They've been around for a few years now on the market and have racked up over, I believe, half a million users in the time they've been up, which is very impressive. Before we get started with explaining the program or going over benchmarks. This video isn't sponsored, and honestly, I've been led to believe by many others that own isn't worth it or it isn't that good. So the goal of this video is to debunk all of that and see just how well it works. When we first boot into Hone, we are greeted by a little disclaimer saying what most optimizers do and letting you know that performance gain isn't guaranteed as each and every system is different and has different needs. The next one is to create a restore point, which you guys obviously know that I love with how often I recommend you all to perform them before applying even the most basic looking of tweaks because you really don't know how it's going to react with your computer. Another big important thing is to not apply something if you don't know what it does, which is very smart advice. We don't really like blindly following things around here. Now that that's all settled, let's move on to the actual optimizations and we got ourselves a counter to 100% or a fully optimized machine. So let's just keep on going through what Home believes we should do. General Windows optimizations, given the description, it's safe to assume that they mean the actual Windows settings, which is typically all very safe to play around with. And if something isn't safe, you can see a tag beneath the optimization that says feature breaking. Next up is a personalized power plan and power plans help manage how your computer uses and conserves power, which can affect both your performance and energy consumption. Mostly fix your CPU, but depending on what's configured within the plan, it can also be USB and PCI express management, hard disk management, and battery management if you use a laptop. Next up is timer resolution, which we've covered on the channel many, many times. So you can check those out for a more in-depth explanation. The short version is that it can help make applications more responsive at the cost of the CPU working harder since the holes are changed to one or 0.5 instead of on some systems every 12 to 15 milliseconds. Optimize MSI is another really interesting one that we've covered on the channel. The basic rundown is that we have line-based interrupts and MSI. Line-based is a bit outdated and easy to get conflicts with your computer sharing interrupts. While message signaled can tend to give whatever needs an interrupt its very own one instead of sharing one. It's the fundamental way that allows devices to have good communication with the CPU. And power throttling is exactly what you think it is. And just reading off of their description here, is a feature that dynamically adjusts the power usage of applications and background processes. And depending on their method of applying this, you can either find it in the group policy or as a registry edit. And it is a bit power hungry, so laptop users beware. Windows Game Bar is feature breaking, which is defined as break some system functionality, but not your operating system. So if you use this or need it for Xbox related apps or processes, you can likely skip this one. Outside of that, it is completely safe to remove. Hibernation is another feature breaking tagged optimization. I'm a fan of disabling hibernation personally. I feel you shouldn't have your PC in a safe state and it's best to let it turn off completely and reset completely if you're not using it. And if I remember correctly, the best example would be looking at your CPU and task manager and if it shows up at X amount of hours when you only just loaded it up, you probably have hibernation enabled. Next up, you can't go wrong with removing network bandwidth limits and given the description they provide, it's safe to assume Windows by default might not allow your PC to reach your full speeds given to you by your ISP. So removing these limits might help improve those speeds. Optimizing your mouse is another super straightforward tweak. By optimizing your mouse, you can ensure you have precise one-to-one -one ratio movements from your hand movements to what appears on the screen. The main reason why we like this one though is because it removes acceleration, which can heavily hinder your aim. Your network congestion provider is a mechanism designed to manage or mitigate network congestion. And I'm unsure which one they're applying here, but some info on the most common ones are Cubic and CTCP. Cubic has been the Windows default for quite some time now and its key features or use case scenarios is for high bandwidth or speeds. It wants to give you the maximum throughput while CTCP, which I tend to recommend, is a bit more balanced, less aggressive, and focuses a bit more on giving better latency and better network utilization. Next up is Hone Gaming Mode, which from a 
what does it change on Windows perspective? I don't know what it changes, but the description that we've been given on it is that it optimizes system resources for gaming by prioritizing game performance over other processes. And it kind of sounds like setting the Win32 priority separation since it too covers prioritizing either the foreground or background, but I doubt their gaming mode is the exact same thing as Win32, right? My first little bit of honest feedback right now is I don't really like how they give the disclaimer to not apply something if they don't know what it does, and then they give something like gaming mode, which doesn't really explain what it does. Maybe I'm just being extra picky, but I don't know. I'd kind of like to know more in depth about what that does. Gaming optimizations covers, as they put it, a collection of optimizations, which includes graphic settings adjustments and other system tweaks. Input output optimizations is something I don't really see talked about too much and it acts as an optimization for your disk and it should help data transfer rates and faster file access. Disabling taskbar and start menu telemetry goes to remove personal usage data that gets sent to Microsoft. It can help resource usage but I'd honestly remove it just because it's creepy Microsoft probes around your business so much. It is listed as feature breaking so keep that in mind. This is where part two honesty needs to come in a little bit. Disable power saving features is starting to seem a little repetitive since we previously had disable Windows power throttling and our very own special power plan. And power plan is completely fine leaving that separate, but these two could easily get merged. Optimized Nesh network settings is, as you've assumed, a way to help optimize your network settings. And the best way to describe what these ones are specifically is if you've used a program called TCP Optimizer before. And a lot of people don't understand that it doesn't just help TCP connections, but your connection as a whole. Optimizing memory management can be a pretty good optimization to do. Adjusting virtual memory can be really good for those on low memory systems. The page file, which is your virtual memory. I'm not sure why they try to make it look like they're separate. And what the page file is, is drive space that acts as more RAM. Network TCP settings is probably an extra addition to some of the Nesh settings that they applied earlier. TCP and UDP are two different protocols used in all sorts of things, but probably care about their function in gaming. TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol, and UDP stands for User Datagram Protocol. TCP is commonly used in scenarios where data integrity and order are important like file transfers, web browsing, email, and it works through a handshake process before data is transferred, while UDP is best used in time-sensitive transmissions like video playback or in most online gaming. And it speeds up connections by not formally establishing a connection before data is transferred. It just shoots immediately. I don't know who you are. Windows Update and Store Telemetry is a feature-breaking optimization, but I don't know if that means that the update process will be broken. But once again, we think it's freaky for Microsoft to be spying on us, so if you don't need it or use it, then it's best to disable. And now going off the description for device affinities, it says that it'll help make sure you're on the most suitable core in your system for your device. And this can actually be a really good way of load balancing and helping reduce some system latency, but only if it's done correctly. For optimizing BCD edits, they aim here to help change your startup process and boot configuration. And if that sounds kind of vague, it's because it is. It's a pretty straightforward description, but at the same time, it's not really describing anything at all. And this one I will skip because the the last time I did it in my test run, I'm pretty sure it ruined all of my extra operating systems. For those of you that don't know, I run all of my tweaks on a dual boot, and the last time I did this, not only did it mess up the test operating system, but it ruined my work and personal one as well, so I'm not really eager to do this one again. Yes, the restore points were made, yes, I tried everything to fix it, but in the end, I just had to reinstall everything. And that's not to say it's Hone's fault, for one, I didn't test it a second in time to confirm this specifically ruined my extra boots, and two, they gave disclaimers saying that they aren't responsible for any damages incurred. Disable Cortana is another straightforward one. You know that virtual assistant that no one uses? Here, we're just going to disable that. Optimizing differentiated services code point can potentially boost your network performance by prioritizing network traffic, kind of like what you need with most online games. Going off the description here for optimizing Windows Explorer, you can expect improved file speeds and changes to the interface. General privacy optimizations focuses on limiting data collection and enhanced privacy controls, whatever 
they mean by that. And I'm also unsure of what specifically is feature broken here. So that's something we need to look out for as well. Disabling Windows services is, as you know, your background processes. And what the setting will do is remove all the unnecessary ones, not a full deblow slash break everything like that one big accident that totally never happened and we all forgot about. And what this can do for you is free up some RAM usage and potentially help your frame times. But outside of that, it really doesn't do all that much. Optimized network adapter settings. I've begun to notice a lot of network settings being dragged out in multiple locations. It would be nice to condense a little bit to make the optimizing process faster, but you know, that's just me. These settings, as you probably know, are the ones I'll be throwing up on screen. You've likely all seen them around at one point in your time optimizing, and they can tend to have a major impact on speeds and sometimes ping depending on how many power saving modes you have on there. Disabling mitigations is something I always see in bulk optimizers. Mitigations are security measures put into place for your protection, and I'm not really a fan of disabling these personally, especially since no one ever really says what specific mitigations they are. Like, I would like to know what security risk I'm going to be exposing myself to. For the full experience though, I'll suck it up and still disable it. On to optimizing drives. This includes some pretty basic stuff like defrag and trimming, which can help your drives more effectively manage the space within them. And depending on how bad it is beforehand, it can help your read and write speeds and potentially improve the drive lifespan. Optimizing scheduled task, I believe is referring to reducing the amount of task within the task scheduler. So I can see how this would be feature breaking depending on what is changed inside, but it should help overall system performance because it needs to run less tasks. Disable SMB v1 and v2 are part of the hidden services on Windows, I believe. And what they are is a protocol for file sharing and communication between devices on a network. And since there's a version three, these two are disabled because it can be exploited and we can just be left with the good version. Disable Superfetch is another service that can be used to help boot up times by preloading frequently used applications, but in some cases it can eat up too much resources, so here it can be disabled. The PCA is another service that helps users run older programs on newer versions of Windows, so if you've ever had to run a program in Windows 7 mode for example, I believe that's what that is. The NVIDIA HDCP is on Honestly, something I've seen to have no effect on performance, but the theory about disabling this is to reduce the processing overhead to encrypt and decrypt HDCP protected content. Optimizing the NVIDIA control panel settings is something I've gone over that does tend to help quite a bit depending on what game it is, and a lot of these settings can be configured by anyone with an NVIDIA GPU. You just right click on desktop, hit the control panel, and you can change all sorts of settings within here, and they even include the profile and spectra settings too, which is like the hidden control panel. And and with the next optimization to they dive a little bit deeper into NVIDIA optimizations, and in their words, it is a collection of optimizations to enhance graphics performance and reduce input lag. I know I'm not one to talk whatsoever about this since I haven't even done it yet, but where's the AMD tweaks at? Free my people. We now next up have setting the CPU and GPU to 100% max performance, so expect some heat generation with this one and some potential misreadings within the task manager. Once again, we have have another network tweak here. The setting allows the CPU to handle some network tasks directly, which can potentially improve network performance. Disable my people. This actually gives me a times two buff. It's a feature that allows users to pin their favorite contacts in the taskbar for quick access. I don't really see how disabling this helps performance, and they don't really mention how it will, but either way, let's do it for science. Disable home group can potentially help out your network performance. It's an old, outdated, retired feature in recent recent Windows versions that was used for file sharing, printers, and media. So it means it's unneeded and can be removed. Disabling touch settings is something you obviously don't want to do if you use it, but if you do disable it, then it removes all touch-related settings, potentially improving performance. Once again, it's not said how it improves it, but it does. Next up is disabling Xbox, which is definitely okay if you don't need it. I believe by default they have a few services running in the background along with the Xbox app, so disabling this can free up some extra system resources. The Windows Search Indexer is constantly analyzing files on your PC that when you go searching for them, it pops up quickly, which yeah, it's a helpful feature, but sometimes it eats up too much CPU and RAM. This next one sets your wallpaper quality from the Windows default 85% to 100% 
percent giving you a bit of a crisper image for your background. Windows Insider is a feature that lets you see upcoming pre-releases of Windows updates and other special Microsoft programs, which the reason why you'd want this disabled is because the new releases can be unstable. It's best to leave yourself on the tested and full release versions of Windows. Disable Windows Air Reporting is another service that collects and sends air reports to Microsoft when a program crashes or encounters an error, which disabling can save you some network traffic. The Explorer Compact Mode will make the spaces between items much smaller, so you can view other files much quicker and see more before needing to scroll. And it shouldn't affect performance, but it should help productivity. Disable Fax and Print is another set of services, which this one is completely reasonable to leave out since it might not be something that everyone wants to disable. We have a few telemetry ones coming up here, and what telemetry is, is usage and information about what you're doing along with some other data too, so it's best to improve our privacy here and turn off telemetry, but the Windows one is used for diagnostics and potentially fixing some problems, so it's up to you on that one. We got two more to go and we're finally done with their 100% recommended full potential PC, and the first of two is old Nvidia sharpening, which it doesn't say it adds on, it just gives you the option to. And then removing settings ads, which hopefully I don't need to explain to you what an ad- Raid Shadow Legends is a highly overmarketed and underdeveloped game. Oh jeez, it slipped out, sorry. Sometimes I have a hard time holding it in. And with that all out of the way now, we are currently at peak PC optimization potential, and for the reasons mentioned earlier, we did skip the boot configuration edits. Now, let's finally get some benchmarks showing. In Fortnite, before Hone, we had frame time averages spike to the 10 millisecond range, but mostly staying down in the 5 millisecond. Now, you're never gonna believe this, but afterwards, we had much higher on average frame times. And our FPS comparison looks like we got ourselves a 30 FPS average increase, but significantly worse lows with 1% being 100 FPS less and 0.1 being almost half. The graph speaks for itself, I don't think I need to commentate on that any further. And here I have a fancy sheet for driver latencies, which we can take a look at here. I better see some comments down there saying, wow, this is great, Corvi. It totally seems like you put some thought, time, and effort into this. I love it so much. Oh, wow. Thanks, chat. I didn't know that's how you felt about it. I did put a lot of time and effort into this. Thank you very much. But being for real now, our average driver latencies went up. The only real improvement seen here is some slightly better kernel latency and the NVIDIA driver getting lower spikes. And I want to add in another game to benchmark. I believe someone recommended something AAA since not everyone plays multiplayer slash battle royale. I agree, that would bring in some good diversity. So leave some comments below on that as well. And once again, no, this video isn't sponsored. It's just been something you all ask me about nonstop, so it needed to be done. I should mention they have some extra tabs of tweaks too, but this is what they recommend for full potential. So I only stuck with those. Hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.